I'm Ryan, that's Brent. Let's do this. This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we're covering Dit Love Pass. Uh, it's probably one of the weirdest cases out there. He says that every time. Even your precious science won't save you today. Okay. So, on the evening of February 2nd, 1959, a group of nine skiers led by Igor Dietlov died near their campsite next to Otorten Mountain in Russia. The horrific state of the campsite was discovered on February 26 by a rescue team. Two of the nine bodies were found by the tree line about a mile away from camp. And despite temperatures dropping to negative 30 degrees Celsius, the two bodies were curiously wearing nothing but underwear. Where were their clothes? Oh, you'll find out. Okay. Another three bodies were found between the camp and the trees. One of them had a fractured skull. However, doctors at the time determined that the cause of death for all five was hypothermia. Strangely, the remaining four bodies of the nine original were not found until two months later. Of these four, one had a fractured skull, one had crushed ribs, and one woman had crushed ribs and a missing tongue. Whoa. Oddly, these four bodies that were found later were wearing the clothes of the previous bodies that were found two months earlier. Even more bizarrely, when these clothes were tested, they were found to be radioactive. Interesting. In fact, there were reportedly traces of radiation all around the campsite. Number one, what kind of radiation? Alpha, beta, gamma? Does it matter? It's radiation. Well, at lots of things have radiation. Like that word in itself is not necessarily as scary as one might think. The radiation becomes even more puzzling when combined with the fact that there was no outward trauma to the bodies. The injuries found in the bodies were caused by a force determined to be too strong for a human to cause. The creepiest detail, however, is that there was no evidence of an outsider entering the tent. The tent was ripped from the inside. How do you look at a tent and know, ah, uh, this was ripped from the inside? How did you determine any of these things they determined? I'm just wondering if you know. If you don't know, okay, cool. Just say, <laughs> they're facts unknown, but that's what the detective said. Anyways, let's get to the theories now. One theory is that there was an avalanche that buried the tent. That would explain the tent being cut from the inside and would also explain the deaths by hypothermia. That doesn't explain the close up. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's an effect called paradoxical undressing where disoriented hyperthermia victims remove their clothes because their bodies feel like they're burning. This would explain the nearly naked bodies, but this theory has no answer for the radioactivity, nor does it have an answer for the missing tongue. So that theory to me is done. What? How? How is avalanche out? How does an avalanche cause radioactive forces and yeah. how does an avalanche rip someone's tongue out? You didn't say her tongue was completely gone. You said her tongue was cut off. It says missing tongue. There are some translation things going on here from Russian to English. I'm just saying. <laughs> Another theory is that a Soviet test missile caused the deaths. A doctor on the autopsy team said an explosion could have caused some of the injuries that were bizarre. However, no evidence of an explosion was found and no records of a missile launch were located. Something I didn't mention earlier was that the expedition originally had 10 skiers, but one of them left early due to an illness, a man named Yuri Yudin, making him the lone survivor of the trip. Huh. I bring this up, because Yudin helped identify items found at the site. But there were some items that he couldn't identify, one of which was a cloth that he claimed looked to be of military origin, as well as skis and glasses, leading him to believe that perhaps the military found the bodies of his friends before the rescuers did, maybe trying to cover something up. We don't know if like the person asking the question was leading him in any way to be like, does this cloth remind you of military cloth? <laughs> Like, you know, it does, actually. It's so, like a making a murderer. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Also, there was no evidence of a fucking explosion near there. That's kind of hard to cover up. Well, not if a missile hit the top of... You ever see Mulan when she does the thing? Okay, and right now you are citing a animated feature film by Disney. On to the next one. This next theory, even I will admit, is completely bananas. Some suspect that the group was actually attacked by a Yeti. All right, next. <laughs> This theory even commanded two hours of a Discovery Channel special called Russian Yeti, no, The Killer no, no. Lives in 2014. However, there was no evidence of a Yeti, and furthermore, I can't imagine a Yeti taking the time to cover its tracks. Either way, everyone knows that uh, the Yeti is a uh, peaceful creature. Not according to Russian Yeti, The Killer Lives. <laughs> this brings us to our final and most popular theory. Mm -hmm. And I imagine you saw this one coming, uh, it's aliens. All right, uh, there were, no, no, hear me out here. There's actually a lot of reasons why this makes sense. There are supposedly reports of bright flying spheres in the area in February and March of that year. Here's a quote from lead investigator Lev Ivanov. Quote, I suspected at the time and am almost sure now that these bright flying spheres had a direct connection to the group's death. 
end quote. Even more peculiar, Ivanov was also ordered by Soviet officials to close the case. Aliens would also perhaps explain the radioactivity found at the site, and would also explain the inhuman trauma caused to the bodies. And as far as no evidence being found of an outsider from the tent, I think it's safe to assume that if they're out there, aliens have gotten pretty good at covering the tracks. I don't buy it. Bright flying spheres, missiles. No! You're going aliens over, oh, a possible missile. I think they're both equally plausible. Maybe that's why they ripped the tent open from the inside. Maybe they saw something they didn't want to see and they got so scared that they were trying to retreat and they were like, fuck zippers. No! Yes! How? Because there's no evidence of a fucking missile blast. There's no evidence of a fucking alien ship landing on a mountain. That's because we wouldn't know what evidence of that looks like. And if there what? was- <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> No, fuck you. Uh, regardless, in the end, authorities supposedly determined that the deaths were caused by a unknown compelling force. I and agree. Consequently, the case remains unsolved. Based off the information in front of us, I go avalanche number one, military cover up number two. But you can't say it's not aliens, is my point. The no, one no, because it doesn't, it doesn't say aliens. It doesn't prove aliens. You cannot connect the two other than you want to. <laughs> I think it proves a little bit, yeah, that there may be alien life out there. I think it's proof that maybe we're not alone. But... Oh, no. Yes, yes! I don't think really there's any conclusion that you can come with based off these facts. So what do you think happened then? I don't know, there's not <laughs> enough information. That's why it's unsolved. What would a compelling force be? You know what a compelling force sounds like to me? Aliens. I think your argument is not a compelling force, though, so. Wow, good one, man. Thank you. Yeah, good. I'm going to think about that later and get a good chuckle. All right. You're going to walk away now? Is that, is that what you're going to do? Don't you dare turn that camera off. <laughs> <laughs>